Hello everyone, good morning. This is Carla Arcana, also known as The Trailblazer. Literally have a couple of moments and wanted to come on and do part two of Birthing the Promise series. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can always go back and watch the replay. I, am, I invite you to invite your followers. I welcome you to invite your followers as well. And so on yesterday, we talked about I'm pregnant with purpose. I'm pregnant with purpose. And so this is the birthing the promise teaching. This is birthing the promise. And so that's if you're share if you have nuggets, if you want to write them down and tweet them or share them on Facebook, make sure you use the hashtag birthing the promise because this is the hour that you're not even gonna, just going to be become pregnant, but you're going to birth it, you're going to nurture it and you're going to watch it grow up in this hour. And so on yesterday we talked about what you're carrying is the promise. What you are feeling is preparation and what you are birthing is purpose. We said, we quoted uh, Romans 8 and 18 that says the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. We talked about the commandment that Jesus made in Genesis 1 and 28 that says be fruitful and multiply. We also talked about how pain produces passion, which ultimately leads us to purpose. We also mentioned that before you can birth it in the earth realm, you must first birth, birth it in the spiritual realm. We went on to talk about what we want to see manifested in our life must first be birthed in prayer. And we talked about calling those things forth, going into another level of prayer, understanding that it's one thing to ask and believe, but it's another thing to declare and decree. I'm going to say that again. It's one thing to ask and believe, but then you got to take it to the next level and begin to declare and decree. I'm going to say that one more time. It's one thing to ask and believe. Come on, we're doing some programming, right? I bit my jaw. Mm. We're doing some programming, right? If you're in Raleigh, North Carolina, you need to join me on March the 18th for Conversations with Boss Women. Welcome. It's one thing to ask and believe, but then we got to take it to the next level and begin to declare and decree. And so the, we, uh, we went on to talk about how Jesus formed the world by the words that he spoke. And I share with you that your words do two things. Hello to my flames. I love you. Your words do two things. They create or they destroy, which ultimately nurtures or terminates. And then I ask you, I, I reminded you that words are uh, containers of power. Come on, if you haven't already, swipe and invite. Let's go. Words are containers of power. So I asked you a question. I said, how are you using your power? And then we quoted Proverbs 18 and 21 that says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And then we just went on and we went on and went on. So because I only have a couple of minutes and I literally got to get going, I got to get down the street, I have a client to meet at 10 a.m. for her VIP session. Really excited. Love it. If you are in need of breakthrough coaching, if you're ready to go to the next level, the next dimension, if you are tired of being stuck, if you are ready to get off of like my sister Sarah says, get off of pause and press play. Listen, you need to connect with us today. You can connect with Sarah. She's the purpose coach and I'm the breakthrough coach. And we're all about, we're, we're slaying giants and blazing trails together in the kingdom of God. And so I wanted to promote her business and promote her ministry as I shared with you mine as well. So today we're talking about help. These labor pains are killing me, right? That's what we're talking about this morning. Help. These labor pains are killing me. And there's one word that I want to mention. And that one word is process. You have, we have the promise of God in my book. The power in waiting. In my book, the power in waiting. I talk about, it says, what do you do when what God said doesn't line up with what you see? And so in this book, I talk about how we have the promise of God. We have the manifestation, but what lies in between is the inevitable process. And what I'm telling you today is the very thing that you think is killing you is actually healing you. The very thing that the very thing that you think is hurting you is actually helping you. Come on here, somebody. And the scripture that God gave me today was Psalms 34. Psalm 34 in its entirety. And I really don't have time to read all of it because I got to get out of here. But it says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will continually speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. This is the New Living Translation version. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. And, and we could just keep going. But there were some things that stood out to me. It said, oh, taste and see. 
that the Lord is the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in Him. I want to keep going. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. I skip down to verse fifteen. His ears are open to their cries for help. So, what's the point of the matter? The point of the matter is when you you know God knows and God hears. That's the message. God knows and God hears because oftentimes we can be in the midst of the pain. We can be in the midst of the pressure and we feel like, God, do you see me? Because <clears throat> I've been in churches where all people could see was my gift, but they couldn't see my brokenness. They could see my gift, but they couldn't see my pain. They could see my gift and they just want to use you, use you, use you, use you up. And then you say, hold up. I came here to be poured into. And so I need you to know today that God sees and God hears and you are not alone. And so the very thing that you think is going to kill you, the very thing that you think is going to destroy you, is the very thing that's going to catapult you forward. Because here is the deal. We got to learn how to be pers uh persevere. We got to learn how to persevere. We got to learn how to be uh, resilient in this hour because only the strong are going to survive and thrive. And so point number one, what you are currently going through is birthing something in you. You can't have the baby without the process. Uh-huh. Come on. You can't have the baby. You can't have the promise without the process. And so God uses tribulation to make us more like him. Let's go over to James 1 and 2. James 1 and 2 tells us. And, I'm, and, and basically, I'm reading the New Living Translation. It said, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your any." Uh, kind come your way. Consider it an opportunity. Okay, hold up. So, in other words, when I have tribulation, when I have trials, when I have circumstances, I have opposition, I got to consider it an opportunity? Absolutely. Consider it an opportunity to be chosen by God to go through. You have been anointed to suffer. Come on, in order to reign with him, you first got to be able to suffer with him. And so, you got to consider it an opportunity because in that pain, come on, in the midst of that pressure... Come on, it's an opportunity for great joy. It says, for we know that when our faith is tested, our endurance has a chance to grow. Come on, and so let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will perfect and complete, needing nothing. All God is doing in this hour is setting us up. That's all he's doing. All he's doing in the hour, you can't have the promotion. Come on here without the process. Come on, that's good. All God is doing is setting us up. And so I want you to declare this with me. I want you to declare this with me. My current troubles are producing or birthing greatness in me because the perp, listen, your plant, your, your current struggles, your pain is producing purpose. Come on. Remember you're pregnant with purpose and now we're going to move along to the birthing process. All I'm doing is giving you the tools and the strategies and the blueprint so that as you go about this pregnancy, Mm -hmm. there's going to be some happy days. When I was carrying my daughter, Patience Armani Harris, who was now 14 years old, there were some days I was excited and I was rubbing my belly and I was like, oh, this precious gift that God has placed on the inside of me. And then there were some days when I, I was nauseated. I was nauseous. I was tired. I was fat. My neck got black. Come on, I was fat with a black neck. Come on. Well, nothing cute about that. My nose is already big and it began to really spread. Come on. So I begin to transition. I begin to transform. But it was worth it because of the promise that I was carrying my God in heaven. And so you got to remember that the Bible says in Romans 8 and 18 that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. So what does that mean? It's all going to be worth it. So ah, these labor pains are killing me. Ah, I can't take no more. Yes, you can. Be careful what you say. You say, come on, God, give it to me. I got it. As long as you don't leave me. Ah, God, as long as you walk with me through this process. Ah, God, as long as you promise not to leave me. As long as you take my hand, I know I'll make it through. As long as I got you to lean on and I ain't got to rely on people, I know I'll be alright. And see, some of you, God is allowing the opposition. I feel the Holy Ghost and I got to get out of here. He is allowing the opposition to prove to you that God is enough. Ah, Shonda. God is enough. Somebody put that all over the screen. And so here's the deal. 
You'll never know God to be a healer until your body has been wrapped in pain. You'll never know God to be a protector until you have been picked, uh, placed in harm's way. You'll never know God to be a way maker until you have been at the point of no return. You will never know God uh, until you know. You'll never know God can until you're put in a position that you alone cannot. We'll never know God to be peace until we have experienced chaos. You'll never know God to be a mender of broken pieces until your heart has been crushed. You will never know God, come on, you will never know who God really is without entering into the face of opposition. So opposition actually is doing you a favor. Come on. It's doing you a favor and I'm done. Hallelujah. I got to get out of here. I pray that you are blessed. I'm so excited because here's the deal. You may cry yourself to sleep at night, but I promise you that the blessings of the Lord and make it rich and add us no sorrow. And so there is your morning has come. Just be clear with that. Your morning has come. Whatsoever took place on yesterday, you got to learn how to forget those things that are behind you. Isn't that what Paul said? He said, I forget those things that are behind me and I press toward for the mark of the high calling. So what are you pressing into? You got to press into purpose. Huh? You got to press into your passion. Huh? You got to press. Somebody just say press, baby, press. Huh? You got And you can be cute while you're pressing. Huh? You can press, baby, press huh? because I ain't got to look like what I'm going through. You can press baby press i might be broken but i ain't gotta show it you can press baby press ah these labor pains are killing me no they're not these labor pains are healing you and preparing you and positioning you to operate to dominate in purpose my god in heaven oh yeah the enemy thought he gonna shut my mouth lies he tell the devil told his last lie the trailblazer ain't going nowhere here to stay gonna rock out in the midst of my storm rock out in the midst of my dilemma gonna birth this baby and teach you also how to birth yours out in the process the days that you feel the most discouraged you find somebody to encourage because when you encourage other people you're gonna encourage yourself the bible says that david encouraged himself in the lord and, and i believe that in essence in return he was then edified he was then when he began to encourage himself i believe that uplifted his spirit and then he can go and encourage somebody else so listen to uh monday we're gonna be talking about giving birth to the promise i gotta go so yesterday we talked about this is the birthing the promise series so if you're going to share this on facebook make sure you use the caps the caption birthing the promise because that's what this is yesterday we talked about i'm pregnant with purpose today we talked about help these labor pains are killing me and then you learn that they ain't killing you baby they just making you sh shaping you and preparing you and then monday we're gonna find we're gonna finish off actually monday we're gonna talk about giving birth to the promise and on uh tuesday we're gonna close out with nurturing the promise so you gotta first identify that you are pregnant number two then you gotta go through that process where the calling of god literally feels like it's about to kill you and then there's times where being chosen gonna feel like a curse but you can't abort the mission because you went too deep now you you, you don't been through too much with god now to try to pretend like you don't know him you don't been through too much with god now his resume is too long baby oh his hands have reached you in the lowest of the lowest places for you to ever pretend as if you don't know who he is and so then we're gonna talk about who my god in heaven giving birth to the promise and then nurturing the promise listen if you want to sow a seed today of any amount if you were blessed listen i got all of y'all seeds on yesterday i gotta package all the material i gotta package the prayer cd the books listen sow a seed of any amount today you'll get my book the power in waiting this is the book that put the trailblazer on the map it's called the power in waiting what do you do when what god said doesn't line up with what you see you can sow a seed of any amount to Carla at womenofstandard.org. Even if you sold yesterday and if it's a fresh word today and you say, hold up, I got to tap into their anointing, go to PayPal, Carla at womenofstandard.org and you'll get this book right here, okay? Love you guys so much, y'all. Be blessed. I got to get ready to go. Pray my strength in the Lord. Pray for me as I pray for you. And my flames, I'm going to come on later and I'll do our Q&A Friday. Love y'all. Have an amazing day.